available are provided by the City of Highland Park. Programs are produced independently by members of the community. The City of Highland Park is not affiliated with the following program or the producers of public access programming and is not responsible for the content. The following program does not reflect the opinions of the City of Highland Park. And welcome to Commons Current Events Roundtable. I am welcoming back one of my favorite guests, Ron Montagna, who is was formerly uh, the Montgomery Ward ex um, Executive of the. Well, you can tell me what you did. You were the. Let me say marketing manager. Marketing manager. Marketing director. Marketing I like that better. Executive of Montgomery Ward. You got it. Yes. There's no work among Montgomery Ward. No, so no one could argue against right, what I just said. Right, And we're going to talk about Divided America. And welcome back, Ron. Thank you, so Suzanne, So happy to have you friend. back again on my show. You're always an amazing guest. And um, we, had, we just ate a great meal at the Bluegrass. Thank you and for that. We, and we, just, we decided to talk about politics. And one thing, Ron is more on the liberal side, Democrat. Mm -hmm. I lean a little bit more on the conservative side. And one thing nice about having lunch with you today and being, we both lead current events, uh, current event discussion groups. Mine is for the Highwood Library and yours is at, in the Northbrook Library. And you have other places too that you have discussion groups. But um, it, it's interesting that, you know, when the, they talk about politicians and how they, they used to argue on the floor, and then they would come in afterwards, they all have lunch together, and they would sit down, Republicans, Democrats, and they would enjoy lunch afterwards. Right. They, Maybe have a drink and have lunch together. They, they could disagree to, in an agreeable fashion. Exactly. And nowadays, and that's why I find it interesting to, for our for our lunch, plus the fact that you're here, you're one person that you can talk to without being screamed at. You know, somebody. I recently I've been at different current event discussion groups, and all kinds of screaming and yelling goes on. Okay. If you don't agree with their politics, oh my God, they're you know. And I think I mentioned I wanted to have. Uh, a lunch with somebody in current events, and because my politics weren't the same as hers, right. she wouldn't even give me her name and her telephone number to call her to make a later date to have lunch. Because I was completely, right. how could I? How could I possibly have lunch with somebody that doesn't think like me? Well, like you, uh, I try to. Uh, we both try to have uh, people disagree in an agreeable fashion. I think it's important that different views be shared, and I think we do need differences. I, I do think we are more divided than we've ever been as a country. I think a lot of this has to do with uh, the division being nurtured at the tippy top. Uh, I don't think that Trump, for example, created the divisions that we have, be they religious, uh, nationalities, uh, be it political, left and right, but I do think that it takes the responsibility of the leader to break through that. And unfortunately, I think our president is nurturing uh, that division. I think he needs it, and that is one of uh, the reasons that he was elected, uh, not the only one, and he did create these divisions. But I think the responsibility at the tippy top is to uh, be a role model and at least set the stage for us to have more agreement. We, we have never been as divided, and that divide is growing. Uh, I don't know how we solve that, and I'm not sure that the Democrats have an easy answer to it so that it will be get better just by automatically just hiring a new president. 
I, I think also the reason I think there may be, um, he was elected because he wasn't a politician. And I think this is um, what people don't understand. People have been so tired of the, all these politicians promising they're going to take care of this for us, they're going to, you know, we're going to have high speed rails, we're going to have infrastructure, we're going to have our bridges taken care of, we're going to have, and, uh, and what and nothing gets done and I think that's why he was elected okay he may not have the best rhetoric okay but he does get things done uh, he you know and that's you know he he never claimed to see President Obama was a, an amazing speaker he could he could speak for hours and talk and talk and I mean he was a um, you know constitutional lawyer and he was uh, like a professor. Uh, I guess he taught, uh, he, I think he even taught in the law school. But, you know, it was a different type of situation. And people, I mean, there was a lot of talk, and I guess obviously things did not get done, maybe the way people wanted it to. So they chose somebody that was a little bit more rough around the collar and would tell it as it is. And I think this is why he got elected. Okay. And, and I don't disagree with what you just said. But I think today what we have is a situation where Trump feels he must have um, the same level of support that he had last time. And that comes from three areas as I see it. Um, there are three distinct parts of Trump's support. W one is the individual that is a conservative, is a Republican, uh, like my daughter, uh, Maria. I love her, she loves me, we differ on our policies, but she would say, hey dad, I'm interested in a conservative view, I'm interested in, in that view of uh, what Republicans have provided. I couldn't vote for Hillary, uh, I'm not a Democrat. So there's that level, and I think that's the largest group within uh, America as far and as conservative. A, and she's a female, and then they say that the, fem the women are not for but, Trump, but, 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 but there are women that are for Trump. That's the first group. Yeah. The, the second group, I feel, they some of these people were Democrats. They were Democrats that very strongly feel the system isn't working for them. Uh, they see Congress, they see uh, the Democrat that was in office prior, and they say, what did I get out of this? And, and they're right in saying, did the system work for them? No, and there were easy pickings for someone that said, well, I didn't like Hillary anyway. So some of the Democrats stood home, and some of the Democrats that would have voted for Obama, uh, that didn't go home, some of them voted for Trump. That would be the second group. For Hillary. For Hillary, sorry. Yes. So that those two groups are the largest group, but there's a third group, and this is the group that I personally am upset with the most within Trump's constituents. And those are racists, those are bigots. By far, they're not the largest group, but they're the most dangerous group. This group sees a happy haven in Trump. They see someone that is not standing up to bigotry, that doesn't stand up to the hate groups, that is endorsed and actually uh, promulgated by KKK is saying he's our guy. And Trump has the, have, well, let me finish. Yeah. Trump has the ability to say, I'm against all of this. I am not for this. But he very carefully says, I never heard that. I don't think I see that. Now that group is small. And that's the group that makes the difference when you're talking about polling. And they say, well, it's a very close election between A and B. There's two, three, four, maybe five percentage points that are not counted because someone is not going to say, hey, this is how I feel. But now, now but I know I my daughter yeah. and I know you don't yeah. feel this way, yeah, me, but me, some me, do. Let me just interject this at the point you said. There is that same group. Now, you talk about the uh, group that is the right supremacist group. I think that's what you were talking about from the conservative side. Well, they're hate but groups. They're multiple but hate they groups. they do have the same group, very similar, 
on the other side of the the very far left group, which you know, there are several. There are several. Uh, I agree. Yeah, that are anti-Semitic. There's a, you know that's in Congress right now that that they want to. They do not like Israel. They want to. They they think that Israel is an apartheid nation and that they are. Um, you know, they, they're very in favor of the BDS. You're movement, absolutely you know, right, but the is difference is well, Israel products. Okay, you're and, talking about you know, you're talking about House members, which I think don't get enough criticism from some Democratic yeah. leaders. So I, I agree with so you. So that's the but other but side of it, which is the, very similar. But you have the president, as opposed to a House member. There's no uh, comparison in influence in America. Uh, when these speakers that you're talking about having hate talk in some of these cases, uh, a couple of them in particular, and when they talk so far off the base, they're being heard right now only by Fox, because Fox plays them up and says, look at what's happening within the Democratic Party. And I totally agree that that language is just as hateful as the silence yeah. that we hear coming from the White House. But when you talk about influence within America, you can't compare a district House member with the President of the United States, the most powerful position in the world. There's absolutely no comparison. And Trump has the ability to go and reach out. I think if he reached out just a little bit and said, you know what, I've made some mistakes. My language has been wrong, or I've been silent on this area. I think, I think though, his his son-in-law and his daughter, who are Jewish, they're not have, president. Have, have, I know, but they have reached out and said the very thing that you said that they're. Um, they have. They have. So part of his family, like part of your family, mm -hmm. and part of my family. You know, I'm more of a conservative, but I my husband is a very strong left wing Democrat. Right. So we we have the same thing. You're a loving and couple. We, but and you know what? And this what the show is called Divided America. Right. And this is exactly what we're talking about today. So how do we fix it? So so we have the same that's going on on this, the same sides. And, you, and you're correct. There are people that are talking out against. It is the fa president's family that's talking out against the white supremacy. But the president needs to do yeah. that. No, I mean, I think he's he's talked about it, but he don't. Maybe it's not quite enough. Maybe that's what he has well, to do. Let me give you a flip side. Truman did some wonderful things and considered one of the best presidents in America. Uh, Truman's wife, Bess Truman, was an anti-Semite. Right. His the, his. It wasn't so much uh, uh, Truman's wife. It was his mother-in-law. Okay. His parents-in-law. Well, both of them. His in-laws were. But, 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 but right. we, we, history remembers more what Truman did, and history is going to remember more what Trump is doing, and, and they're not going to get too much in the fact that, well, you know, he had a, a, a I mean, look at what he did the other day, and not to just talk about Trump this whole half hour, but look what he did by honoring and praising the, hung, the, the Hungarian uh, uh, premier that came in and saying, you know, he's doing great things for his country. Well, he's an, he's an anti-Semite, this, this man, this president. And he's criticized greatly by both Republicans and Democrats. And he just shrugs it off. But you know, there's so much anti-Semitism. It isn't just there about is. him. I mean, look what's happening in Germany right now. Look what's happening in England yes, and in right. France. Anti-Semitism is it's, it's all over it's the place. It's rampant nationalism yeah. that's on steroids. So maybe he's trying to get at least, you know, by, by acknowledging the, their, their prime minister, their president, maybe in, in some way. And, and you're right. I think if he, um, if, if, if this is done with a goal, a plan, okay, but his, his record is not one of planning. He's transactional. What Trump will do one day, he will take away the next. And even his own people will not agree with him or disagree in a way that uh, suggests that they're not on the same page. Now, I've heard so the, people... The reason he, when he's talking about anti-Semitism, look at his family. His daughter's Jewish. His grandchildren are Jewish. Right. I, you know, his son-in-law. I mean... I'm dr judging him by his presidential actions, yeah. not by his relatives. So, um, yeah. But his, the person that's the closest to him is his own children and grandchildren. I don't think he hates 
people. I don't think he is an anti-Semite. I think, and I'm, I don't want to get into his psychology, but I do think that what Trump does is all for Trump. And I guess he wants people to like him. Well, yeah. He has this thing about people, you know, he has a, but he that has has to turn, somebody. That has to be, that has to turn into something that's good for America. In other words, we don't mind if our president lies. We don't mind if there is a goal intended in that, that we can say, yeah, he did lie, but because of that, we end up with a result that's best for the country. But his best results are what's good for Trump. He's self-serving in a way that but, doesn't serve the country. But he does get things accomplished. A lot of presidents will like talk. Like well, I mean, look at the economy. It's, it's booming right now. I would give the uh, Republican Party credit for that, and that's why he gets great support within the Republican Party. They don't like him as a person. And there's jobs that, you know, uh, African Americans are working now, yes. and they're doing yes, well. the economy is the doing better. The economy is doing good. People are getting hired, you know. I mean, I talk to a lot of people. Even my mm -hmm. granddaughter, she just graduated college. She got a, a job in New York already. I think any Republican that would have won the White House would have served that purpose. In other words, I can't think of one thing. But nobody's done well, it up until now. I, I can't think that there's one thing pr Trump himself, through his ideas and his pushing them through, has done anything. In other words, the judges... Uh, the economy, the tax breaks, they've all come through the people that I would consider conservatives that really like the fact that now in the White House there's someone that will sign this. Right. And Trump has signed it. Yes. I give him credit for that. But not for coming up with the ideas. He doesn't seem to have ideas. He's transactional. He's, he goes with whatever the last person talked with him about and said, here's what you're going to do. You ought to get out of Afghanistan. You ought to get out of the Middle East. No, but you better send some more but he troops did, in. He did work with, he went against, uh, he did come on out On Tuesday, and then yeah. Wednesday, become, we get a different story. But, but, um, but on China, he did follow through, and he put sanctions because they were taking our, you know, a lot of our, our research. He's in, and he's our, in trouble. Yeah. He's got 41% of America that, that supports him, and he's got one thing going for him, and it's a great thing. He's got Democrats against him, and they're totally divided as well. But at this time, at this time, if you looked at what Obama did, they they come in. The, they were both in the forties at this time and during the okay. you know, before. So they're very similar in but, some but ways. But Trump has never been above fifty. He's never come close to fifty, and that doesn't mean he's going to lose because he's right. got Democrats who are also not. The answer today, I don't, I don't see the Democrats as being I, uh, anybody yeah, that... But I thought we were talking also about today, Bucharest, we were talking about, you know, the, all the, like, impeachment rumblings growing right. among the Democrats. You know, why are they talking... First of all, you in you know, we have a whole thing on impeachment. Right. And it's, it's a big process. You just can't go in and impeach. Well, the but Democrats are so, wrong. So, if, if, right. If, and it's never going to pass the Senate. So why bother to... Put all their energy, put their energy, if you want to be elected, and you know, if you want to beat Trump, talk about infrastructure, talk about, talk about uh, health care, talk about things that matter to the people. Okay, is that, what, the, is that what Trump is talking about? Not, not about, I'm talking about no, the is people. That, but is that what Trump is talking about? Yeah, they're talking about... No, is that what Trump is talking about? Yeah, he was talking about infrastructure. Well, he said, in two weeks, I'm going to uh, come back and give you the plan that we have or give you a how we'll right pay now, for it. But right now... He, he came out and basically the, said... the Democrats, go, no matter what he's going to do, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to vote against it. Okay, watch Pelosi. But, but look, but Pel Pelosi watch, is one that... Watch Pelosi, because Pelosi has a problem. Pelosi has she's a, not a, she's not for impeachment, by the way, because no, she knows no, she's smart. she knows what's going to happen. Pelosi knows that if if they move to impeach Trump, he will shore up his base. He'll divide the Democrats, and he'll win again because he'll have people staying home that no, right now say, "I don't like him, but I'm not going to vote for that person." Right. So that right now, you're absolutely right. If uh, the Democrats consider impeachment the way to beat Trump he's licking his chops because he's a marketing yeah. master right he, he knows is. how to uh, help Trump now my problem is that 
that has to be converted into helping America. He knows how to make Trump number one. How does he do, serve America by doing that? Now, the Democrats, if they fall in the trap by saying, we're just going to trash him, the American public, they want something from the uh, coming election. They want someone who's going to have a vision, who's going to say, here's what I'm going to do for you, and be able to deliver on it. That, Trump what, is delivering to the promises that he said to the majority of America that didn't want those promises, like a wall and this business about and, uh, let's get rid of this s-hole countries. We don't want them. To, we want to put up a barrier so that people come here, not like our, our grandparents or parents even, but we want people that will measure up to a set of rules. And if they don't speak English, well, sorry, Grandpa Montaigne, you're not going to be allowed into America. And your kid is, your grandchildren well, are never going to be uh, living in uh, well, hundreds of thousands of dollars away. The immigration system has to be fixed. It just, it's just rapid right now. I think yeah, you're yeah. right. And, and yeah. I think neither the Democrats nor the Republicans have done anything on that. I give Trump credit for calling attention to the immigration issue. Exactly. He's, bring, he's bringing it to a head. And they may not like his answers, but at least he is not uh, deep fixing it. he's doing something about well, trying to do something. I think about Obama, Obama just basically didn't do anything in that arena, I nor know. did Bush before him. I am not, they tried, and, and I'm trying to figure out why they didn't. You know, and and he had issues uh, with because Congress is too. so divided that Congress is going to have to the solve more this. We, I, I see it as the more we, you know, what's going to happen if the next president is Democrat, the Republicans are going to do whatever it's being done to them now, they're going to do to the next group of and, people. And here is the part, and here's this is the, the problem. problem. And here's the problem that's going to be so fun. They need, they need to be more bipartisan. The, the, the deciding election is going to be done by the people who decide the next president are people who aren't paying attention to our program or go to our current events groups. They get involved in this election maybe three weeks before and they start to say, oh, election November, who am I going to vote for? Many of those people, they're, they're independents, they're not leaning anywhere right now. And, and right now, Trump is shoring up his base. And, and the haters who simply just hate Trump for any reason at all, they just say, you know, tomorrow's not, uh, you know, Wednesday, they would they would disagree because he said and, it. And the Democrats are divided amongst very the much so. right now because um, they they are not. Um, you know, you got the very the left correct the left wing socialists, socialists right? The, you know, and then you got the uh, more of the uh, the middle. Well, if a socialist more independent if Democrats, a, if a socialist is the nominee, which Fox is pushing as heavily as they can, uh, in like Ocasio-Cortez and Bernie. Uh, they would love to see that voice come through for the Democratic Party because it's so simple being in marketing to just say, America, are you going to vote for a socialist? And the answer is no, even without understanding it. Now, the young people don't even know who's, what socialism is, but they seem to be okay with that. The well, problem is young people yeah, don't they, vote. They right. don't vote. Because the young people want their college paid for. They want their debts free. paid for. It they want good. freebies. Right. And whenever you're getting freebies, they're going to... But again, are they coming out to vote? Again, watch Pelosi and then watch the nominees that are rising. Right now, the person that I think has the best chance to be the president next president is 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 uh, Biden. But Biden has a lot of baggage from he before. He does. And if and he was he, running against anybody without yeah, baggage, he'd yeah. be in trouble. And but he's running against Trump. But he's, you know, he, as a vice president, he, they, he there was a lot of stuff. And I think his, even it shows that his, um, is he best to beat Trump? Then it shows that his son Hunter had some dealings with uh, with, with other countries. I, would, I, think you know, would, I think he'd lick his chops yeah. to say, let's talk about dealing yeah. in Russia. Yeah. Let's talk about... Why is he on Trump's radar? Hunter Biden has problems right now, too, that he... Um, but Hunter's yeah. not running for president. But that's his son. Trump is. So, you know, but he had business in Ukraine, right. and so that, that's coming up. See, they're always going to find some 
baggage and some dirt on somebody. That's and Trump has is. a world supply of baggage, which America litigated in 2016. Yeah, but so they said, you know what? He did these things with the women. Right. He, he had these problems. But you know what? We're going to elect him because we do. You said it earlier. They wanted change. They wanted a, someone outside of Washington. They wanted someone that they feel could make a difference and that it wasn't being done by normal right. politicians. And, now they, and then they're harping, when they're not harping on, uh, you know, what happened with the Mueller thing, they're harping on impeachment, then they're harping on the tax returns. Right. I mean, I, I don't know about you, but it, I was reading something that was interesting. It says, um, and it was an article by, um, by um, Mulvaney, and he said, Democrats may have the law on their side, Oh, oh, said David French. I'm sorry, it was David French in National Review. But what an awful law it is. Like Trump or loathe them, like him or loathe them, the realization that Congress can investigate your finances, no matter who you are, for any reason or no reason at all, should be chilling to all Americans. Okay. I mean, would you like, uh, you, would you like your tax, you know, your tax returns put outside? I mean, I don't see there's, just because... In well, the past, okay. people show okay, their taxes. The, the short answer is you know, that in the past, it really doesn't matter to in, those in people. The, the short answer Maybe is that Congress America has wanted to see the tax returns of all the previous candidates. But why? Trump didn't. Yeah, it but, doesn't matter why. But why? They not? wanted them. Yeah. And and, uh, they, and Trump didn't deliver any one. You know something? I don't care. Could I'm he win again? About Trump or anybody. I don't want to see your tax returns. Okay. I don't want people to see my tax returns. I don't care to see anybody in Congress. I'm not running returns. for president. But I don't care. See, most of us, a lot of people don't care about if they in Congress what their tax returns are mm -hmm. in the president. I don't care about anybody's tax Okay. I want them to be a. I to me is is their tax returns doesn't okay. make them a good president or a bad president. When I was in marketing in my first year, I realized that if I took myself as a guide as to how America felt, I'd be making a huge mistake. They didn't like as much olive oil and garlic as I did. But so I began listening to what the people are saying, and what the people are saying is. We want this openness. We do want this information. It, it, for example, like on but the. But what are they going to do with it? I mean, what's the a point? See it, that that's the point. Don't you rather? I would rather that instead of going into his tax return, I would okay. rather see him start working on the bridges. Bridges that are falling apart. There, you know, you hear bridges that people are on their cars and the bridges collapse. Exactly. American people are saying, "Hey, Congress, why can't you get together?" Okay, and I think at some point, when there is a Democratic nominee, that Democratic nominee cannot just say, you don't want Trump, you want me. I think that could be a losing argument. I think it goes without saying that there are people hardwired to vote for Trump and hardwired to not vote for Trump. I think the next election is going to be won by someone with a vision that says, here's what I'm going to do, here's how I'm going to do it. And not complain, and not complain about the other person.